Hi, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips. Well, buy to let has been very, very popular over the last 15, 20 years in the UK, but with mortgages now reaching a 16 year high, yeah, 16 years, they haven't been this high since 2008. And we know what happened after that, right? And I've done a lot of videos on this, on, on, on how I think, you know, the property market is going to be affected. But with these rates reaching such a high rate, uh, buy to let is not looking so viable in fact it's looking completely unviable if you like it's just not stacking up uh, according to the, the rates that the people are, are seeing at the moment so if you've got a landlord coming off of a, a say a two-year fixed and they're coming on to an average two-year fix is now 6.66 that's 666 an ominous number i'd say but if they're coming off of those sort of rates and their payments are trebling then the buy to let mortgage they've got may cost more than the rent they're getting in and clearly the lender would, wouldn't be very happy with that uh, and, and certainly on new deals at the moment it just doesn't add up I, I told you on a previous video that I've looked at properties and even if I could get like a hundred thousand discount on what they want it still wouldn't add up with a 75 percent mortgage now obviously it's cash buyers there's cash buyers out there and that doesn't affect them but you know you've got to look at the cost of money as well and when and when the money is even if you're not borrowing money uh, an investor should still look at the cost of money and what they could do elsewhere you look at this when you're buying stocks and shares and you're calculating dividend yields and that sort of thing so you should look at all these things um you know and in fact that the high rates are not only affecting uh buy to let they're affecting uh central london properties in central london uh half spend rate spike half spend on central london offices it's certainly in the same article there's a mansion there in Hampstead, i think bishops avenue rented out for more than more than a million pounds a year by the bbc that's on taxpayers money for these people who, who filmed the apprentice um there was a warning a little while ago uh new warning on mortgages as key guilt rates that's the bond rates past mini budget low levels um and then you know for the, for the government things are not looking good rishi sunak there um rishi's reckoning they call it inflation going up uh un uncontrolled inflation they can't seem to get it down so rates have gone up for 13 months in a row now mortgage rates have reacted at a 13 year 16 year high so it's not looking good so what do landlords do well some landlords are trying to sell up but they're finding that they can't get the prices they thought they could get so what else what are the other options so what i want to look, look at today is exploring the alternative to, to standard buy to let and, and look at things like service accommodation and HMO holiday lettings as well. Uh, HMO uh, is, is a different strategy. You, your property may not may not qualify for that, but holiday let service accommodations are pretty similar. I'm going to go through them in a bit more detail quickly right now. Now, I'm putting this up on my blog, which you can find on moneytipsdaily.com. I'm putting the full article up here. Uh, but let's have a look at this. So let's look at service accommodation. It's proving quite popular more and more popular in in the market this is where you've got a fully furnished property let on a short-term basis often targeted at business travelers tourists corporate clients can be done through airbnb or business.com uh, uh, bookings.com i mean uh, you can do it either way but some companies will have their own corporate clients they don't touch either of those platforms the pros much higher rental yields in fact i've looked at one of my properties and i can get three times as much in my hand as i could on a standard buy to let uh so so better yields uh, compared to a traditional buy to let can provide significantly higher rental yields due to the premium rates charged on a short term basis the other pro is flexibility landlords have the option to use the property for personal use when it's not in in rental use uh, and flexibility on a range of things that the tenants don't have a right to stay uh, as they do in in a, in a normal buy to let and in fact we know that the government's bringing in renters reform which will make it even more difficult to, to get tenants to vacate a property in fact one of my clients has got a tenant they've they've served the tenant's been there a couple of years they served notices on them two years ago they've been a bit anti-social as well um, and they've just said no we're not we're not going we can't go you haven't given us enough notice and the agent then said to the the managing agent said to the to the the landlord well we can give you the name of a solicitor that can help you yeah great thanks a lot great service yeah okay the other pro is strong demand particularly in uh, popular popular tourist destinations and business centers it doesn't have to be right in london by the way it lots of places you would never dream of think of of, of working for service combination do really work 
Now, the cons are the increased management requirements, regular cleaning, maintenance, management, guest turnover, more time consuming and requires active involvement from landlord or does it? When I did it, um, I, I was doing it myself. So I found it a pain in the neck because I was doing it more or less myself with the help of a cleaner, but the cleaner wasn't always available. I've had to mop floors, change bedding, go down to the laundry, the big bag of laundry and all that sort of stuff. I hated it, you know, and that's why I got out of it. But the money was always good. And, and the demand was was always very good too. Uh, and I'm on the outskirts of London. It, it worked really well, but I, I just couldn't cope with it really that the work that was involved. The other cons are, yes, you can get seasonal demand fluctuations depending on the locations. Occupancy rates may fluctuate, resulting in periods of high or low demand, maybe voids. The other thing is regulatory considerations, compliance with local regulations. Some, you might have licensing requirements in some areas, and health and safety standards can be more stringent than a service accommodation. I don't know about that. Um, holiday letting, very similar uh, to, to service accommodation, but you're looking at um, holiday let areas, like, you know, places where people want to go on holiday, I guess. But, you know, the, the pros are a very attractive rental income. You know, in fact, uh, I, I was probably telling you about when my family wanted to go and stay in, in parts of Kent, you know, Ramsgate, which is, you know, it's, this is not, you know, sandbanks you know it's it's a good area but it's not a luxury area um and yet you know some some of the places were closing as much as four thousand pounds a week in the summer but maybe in the winter you're going to have lows there uh landlords can also use the properties themselves so they can have a holiday home by the coast rent it out for most of the year and then use it for their own holiday and their own family when when they need it tax advantages holiday lets and service accommodation can offer certain tax benefits but you need to talk to your accountant about that as far as i know you can offset the interest against the the mortgage unlike uh people with properties in their personal name doing buy to let thanks to george osborne section 24 thank you very much george uh so but do check with your accountant on that and and the cons again you know demand in holiday areas can fluctuate obviously off peak seasons you know if you're on a windy beach in the winter maybe people don't want to stay there but other people have said, no, you get a pretty good return throughout the year. Management challenges, again, similar to service accommodation. Uh, increased competition. Obviously, in, in holiday areas, you have much more competition. OK, so that's the two, uh, the service and holiday accommodation. I've talked to you about that. Then you could look at HMOs, houses in multiple occupation. The pros are higher rental income and yields and that sort of thing. Uh, more of a diverse tenant uh, pool. HMO can attract a right, wide range of different types of tenants. Uh, demand stability, there's good demand there. The other pro I would say is that, you know, if one tenant leaves, you're not losing the whole property, right? So if you've got five rooms and one leaves or you've got a void in one room, it doesn't affect the whole thing as it would with a, with a standard buy-to-let where you've just got one tenant. Uh, the cons include licensing regulations, uh, possible in some areas you might even need planning, more management, yes, there is more management there. But now you've got companies that will manage HMOs, which when I was doing them, and I still are, I, I found it difficult to find that. And potentially higher costs, you're, you're dealing with the bills and that sort of thing, as you are with, with the service accommodation as well. Uh, so tax considerations, you, you've got to check with your own accountant on that, but there may be advantages in the service and, and uh, uh, holiday let situation as far as I know, you can offset that, that rental income, the tax against rental income, uh, the, the, the interest charge against rental income, I mean. So the conclusion is look at alternative strategies here rather than just, well, I've got to sell up because, you know, things can change in the market. You know, we can go through ups and downs and maybe this could work for, for a year or two or maybe for the longer term. I, did, I, said I didn't do it before because uh, of the, the management pain in the neck. But now... I've, I've teamed up actually as an estate agent myself, I've teamed up with people who can manage properties all over the country. And, and they will tell you, they will give you a free assessment on whether your property is suitable for this because they don't want to take on properties where they feel they're not going to get, going to get 80, 90 or even hundred percent occupancy. And, and the other thing is that you've got to look at this renters reform bill coming in through parliament at the moment. And I'm sure it's going to fly through. The government have got a majority and labor are supporting it. But they are going to introduce more legislation, make it harder to get your property back, having to give a reason like you're you're the defendant here having to give a reason to, to get your property back. Like I'm going to sell it. 
well, you know, why do you need a reason? It doesn't make sense to me. But that's what they're bringing in. It's a popular vote winner, maybe, uh, even though they're upsetting some of their own voters uh, uh, who are uh, tend to be buy to let landlords who row their own boat and try and build up their own pension. But that's another story. So, look, um, there's no doubt that service accommodation can increase uh, returns for landlords. But you've got to think about it carefully. You might have to talk to your lender as well to see if they will approve that type of lend that, that type of renting. Uh, but if you want more information about that, just contact me. You can reach me at um, on, on my estate agency side at southhearts at localagents.co.uk. I'll put the, the link up there for you. Now, look, a lot of people are facing problems on residential mortgages as well with rates going up. So there's never been a better time to get your money management in place. So if you'd like more help with money management, I'm running a free uh, webinar Wednesday night. You may have missed it if you're, if you're watching this a few days time, but it's tomorrow night as I speak. And I'm going to give you three steps to success money management. It's an hour webinar. I'll give you lots of great tips to help you get your 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 funds, your your, your finances in order and help you build wealth for the future by by investing for your future, whatever you invest whatever you want to invest in. It doesn't have to be property, by the way. So do, do, do check, that, check that out on the link below. Uh, and then if you're interested in doing service accommodation, but you don't want to do it yourself, you want to get someone to experts to, to bring it in, where you could possibly double or even treble your net return in your hand, contact me at on the link below. Uh, that's South Hearts, that's H-E-R-T-S, at localagent.co.uk. And I can put you in touch with people that can help you get that organized. So thanks very much for listening. This is Charles Kelly Money Tips, and I will see you in the next video. Do check out my free webinar tomorrow evening, or, or if it's not, if you miss it, then there'll be another one coming along. So do click on the link and register for that. Thanks very much for now, and bye for now. Take care.